Welcome to another edition of The Fence Show, Active Yards. Today I'm in Sacramento, California with Adrian Borg of Lifescaping Outdoors, Pavers and Fencing. No, just right. <laughs> Lifescaping, try. your fence, and, the Lifescaping Fence and Patios, that's it. Life, okay, Lifescaping Fence, fence and, and patios. patios. Yeah. So we're going through a branding change over the past couple of years here, so it's hard for me to distinguish this new name. So uh, congratulations on the new Thank name. Thank you. Yeah, it's Thank good you. to be here. Um, uh, I'm having an enjoyable day. We just finished up a training uh, with uh, Adrian's salespeople, mm -hmm. and uh, I got to say, it was one of the most uh, fun uh, trainings I've done in a long time. Um, we apologize. We have a little bit of a train thing going on here. So uh, we're literally uh, outside. It's such a beautiful day, and as you people on the East Coast know, if you're in California on a beautiful day, you have to be outside. So. <laughs> I appreciate you letting me do this. Absolutely. A real so, treat for you. Yeah. So um, anyway, we just finished up a great training inside with your salespeople. And I've been here many times over the past uh, years. I think you've been an Active Yards dealer for about eight years, eight one years. way, shape uh -huh. or form. And uh, that was um, probably the most enjoyable um, sales training I think I've ever done Excellent. Uh, in this room, uh, this, this, uh, this company. Uh, we talked about some good things and, and it was really a fun part of the process. So. What I'd like to do today is just get you know get kind of everybody uh, introduced to Adrian Borg. A lot of people know Adrian from you know his active participation in the uh, Active Yards Dealer Group. Um, but uh, why don't you just give everybody a little background on uh, you know, how you got into the fence business? Because I think it's a unique story because uh, yeah. you got into it a little bit later than most people. Absolutely. So I started out my career in the telecommunications industry. I did mergers and acquisitions for many years, and uh, so I'm not your typical fence. Uh, entrepreneur, if you will, <laughs> uh, and uh, my brother had a fence company, and uh, as I was, uh, after September 11th, I decided I didn't really want to travel anymore, and so I, I took a step back and I said, what do I really want to do? And so I spent uh, several weeks in my brother's fence business and, and said, you know what, this is uh, something I'd like to make a go out of, and I thought I could bring a, a white collar mentality to, to the blue collar business of fencing. And that's what I tried doing, and I wanted to grow it through acquisition and organic growth and create something that was a little bit more unique in the marketplace than your typical fence company. So when you, um, when you got started with your brother, was that in San Francisco or in Sacramento? I was in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I went through my training with him in San Francisco. Uh, he was in, on San Mateo, which is on the peninsula, and I spent six months uh, just really understanding the business and seeing how I can help him, and yeah. that's how it all started was by trying to help him. and consult with him and that type of thing and and then um, and then from there we kind of just drew lines on a map and he said he was gonna stay in one area and I decided I was gonna come out to Sacramento and so you moved your company. whole family to Sacramento to start a fence company well I like the I, old days like yeah, a homestead it really it, uh, <laughs> it really was interesting you know I got a 40-foot trailer on a small piece of land and I made a third of it my office a third of it was my bedroom and a third of it was my tool room that I locked up all my tools in and I left my wife and kids at my house and I, uh, I said, let me go make sure I can make this work. And oh, wow. after six months, I, uh, I called her up and I said, Let, let's look for a house out here. We're going to make this work. So this is 2002? Yeah, 2002. Wow, exactly. good for you. And so that's exactly how I went. And then, then you went on to, I think you have five children, right? Four. Four children. And you yeah. went on and all three are out of the house now. And yeah. you have one that's one to go. Absolutely. One's and they're a senior all... in high school and she'll be leaving the... Uh, the nest here pretty soon. So. so that during that period, it's been 16 years. So yeah, you did you did the whole thing here. So absolutely, all for the fence business, and it worked out yeah. well because I, I think uh, obviously your kids are doing so well anyway. So absolutely, fencing has been good to me and my family. Yeah, for um, sure. And I, you know, and I've uh, you know I met you I think as I said eight years ago. We got started uh, with you. Um, I loved uh, you know the, con the the focus you had on uh, on you know on the uh, the industry. Uh, if I remember you were real big in Redwood, or was it Redwood mm -hmm. or Red Cedar that you do mostly out here? Redwood. 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 Mm -hmm. And uh, you had a lot of innovative uh, sales uh, techniques and, and quality uh, of installations and kind of innovative uh, uh, packages that you offered people. You uh, got into vinyl, you know, when everybody else did, but you know, it's not, it wasn't exactly the most mature vinyl fence market. Um, over the years, you know, just we had the little bit of ups and downs. You expanded, you know, you went into other parts of the state. We did. Uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Similar story. He did this. You know, I'll just speak for you because yeah. I could tell the story Absolutely. really fast. Did the same thing in Los Angeles that you did in uh, Sacramento. San Diego. And San Diego. Um, after a couple years, uh, you just money to share a little bit about growing the business and then the things you did in the past four years 
to get more control of your life and the business. Just real, real quick, share yeah. that story. So just briefly, you know, the original goal was to grow the business, mm -hmm. right? And I think that what happened was we uh, did that under somewhat of a false pretense and growing the business didn't necessarily mean uh, growing your territory. Yeah. We could have easily done that uh, within, looking back now, we could have done that within our own territory. But instead what we did was we did expand and that created a lot of challenges. It created, yep. uh, it created logistic challenges, it created personnel challenges and created a lot of problems. And so what we did was over the year, over the last few years, we've consolidated that and became laser focused in the area that in our primary area, which is Sacramento. And our whole goal now is to go deeper, not wider. It seems like you've, you've really recommitted to um, developing the market. I think we've had a lot of fun kind of realizing, you know what? Sacramento's gonna take a little bit of energy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and get uh, vinyl uh, kind of in a higher market share. Because we'd guess, what do you think, uh, what do you think the market share is in Sacramento, wood versus vinyl in a privacy fence backyard? Oh, it's, I still think it's probably five to eight percent of the marketplace. It's, vinyl, yeah, it's that's vinyl. low. Yeah, it's very low. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm looking at your shop today, and you know, um, looking at your inventory, and I see several truckloads of uh, of wood, a beautiful mm -hmm. redwood, um, and uh, obviously you have quite a bit of vinyl as well. But it's it's more of a a, a wood market, and I know that I've had fun with you trying to encourage you to turn mm -hmm. it into a vinyl market. So. We're very committed uh, on uh, trying to make that work for you. So um, just a couple of things, you know, you've, you've built a really successful business. You've dabbled in all different parts of it, different qu products, different markets. You did decking, you know, for many mm -hmm. years. You dealt with some of the retail store programs. Um, you, you still cover kind of a wide area. Now that you've kind of done it all and now you're refocusing, like, what are, what are like your core competencies as far as the way you see the opportunity in the marketplace? So what sets Lifescaping apart from the other fence companies in, in Northern California? Well, what's interesting is this, is that in our market, there's 58 fence companies. So it's a lot of fence companies. So what you have to do is you have to differentiate yourself somehow. And the way that we're doing that now is through activators, through the branding, right? The branding proposition. And so, um, so by by telling the story, by by stopping the buying process and giving them a total solution, uh, it allows us to uh, to capture that customer one way or another. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's the direction we're going towards now. And you know, even in the sales meeting today, you saw that there's more and more of an acceptance of that. And I think that as one of the largest fence companies in Northern California, we have to continue to stay fresh and ahead of it. Yeah, and with the products that we're seeing from Active Yards, it allows us to do that pretty easily. Yeah, there's uh, there's a, there's a lot of opportunity with that, and your and your 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 salespeople are very well trained. They know how to mm -hmm. use all the tools that you have and, and everything uh, associated with that. What is your biggest challenges running a business like this? Like you know, over the past several years, what's been the probably you know maybe two or three of the biggest challenges that you have? It's interesting. I think there's a few. Uh, labor has been one of the biggest challenges, yeah. and a fence guy doesn't just fall off a tree. Yeah, they're they're trained and and you have to make sure that they know exactly what they're doing. That's going to cause you problems in the long run. So I think labor, so what we did was we created an in-house university to train staff and, uh, and put a program around that so that we can make sure that we're taking someone with the core skills and developing them into somebody that we know that we could trust long term. Do you have like a stepping stone program for installers? They start out as a, uh, a trainee and then they work we their do. way into it. And, and do they see that? We do. So there's, we call it career pathing. Oh. So what they could do is they could start out as a laborer and then from a laborer, they go to a builder. And then from a builder, they can become a foreman. Yeah. And so um, there's a career path that they can go through. And we have, uh, we have all the training that goes with that. So we could start out somebody from teaching them how to use a skill saw all the way to somebody who has already, all, already has all those basic skills to just basically teaching them how to yeah. install our products. How to self-fence and, right. and install fences. So I think that was probably our biggest challenge was labor. And I think we put a great solution in place. We've actually gained five crews this year. Uh, which is uh, phenomenal considering what the marketplace is and the demand for the crews, especially yeah. with all that pent up demand from people not doing anything for all those years. I think the second, um, the second largest issue that we've had is consistent supply of material. And um, on the wood side, you go through all these cycles. Yeah. Um, and so last year, there wasn't any material to be found. And this year, there's a gluttony of material. And so you have to make sure you're not getting bad material. Yeah, or too and, much of it. Or too much <laughs> of it. And the good news, you know, and that's what we, one of the things that we like about doing with the, uh, the vinyl and the aluminum is that 
um, we never have that that issue. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, the opportunity certainly certainly exists. What percentage of your business would you say is um, residential versus commercial? Yeah, that's been changing a little bit over the last couple of years. But right now, I'd say we're probably about eighty five percent residential and about fifteen percent uh, commercial or what we consider to be HOAs as well. So yeah. And what about the percentage of your business that would be, um, you know, all installation versus material sales, whether it be wholesale or DIY? Mm -hmm. Also, it's been changing quite a bit over the last year, but right now we're sitting at about 90-10. 90-10. 10. 90, 10. So 90 installation, 10% wholesale, and our goal is to continue to grow the wholesale side of that business. I just so noticed we're that we're literally just sitting here and I just saw a wholesale customer right. driving through the yard. There's actually been three since we started this conversation. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so. And I saw two or three um, retail consumers here today yep. as well. Exactly. Um, as they were coming in. And, so we're promoting that through, uh, through Facebook Marketplace, through Craigslist. Uh, we're using different avenues to try to promote that type of business. And what we're finding is not only do you have that little sale to that individual, but then they're also telling people about us and we're getting even larger jobs out of it, which is great. The, uh, on, the, on, on the sales side, um, you know, you and I have talked about for years all different scenarios of trying to grow the sales business. Mm -hmm. um, how many salespeople are you running right now? Is that the full thing we saw today, the full group? Is that about five or six sales six, guys? Six, uh, six outside sales guys, one inside, and we're uh, getting ready to double that team as we try to focus more on regional selling as opposed to uh, global selling across the entire marketplace. So you're um, you're thinking about going to territory sales. Correct. And and the and the idea with that is to to give somebody what to to allow them to focus on on seizing every opportunity within a geography, whether that be a retail opportunity, a wholesale opportunity, or, or a um, a contractor. But if a right, specification, right, yeah. and all of that and. Yeah. There's so many opportunities uh, in any one region, and unfortunately, on a daily basis, we drive by most of them trying to get from one appointment to the other. So uh, <laughs> too busy working to make any money. <laughs> exactly. So our focus now is to to rethink that process and to really try to um, give each sales rep a, a specific territory, yeah. and it's their responsibility to hit everything in that territory that can generate revenue. For yeah, us. that's. I'll tell you, we've been talking about that for a couple months, and and I think that in your area, especially because of the, um, the distance that's required to travel between one city and another. Yes. I think it'd be really helpful get get somebody that lives in those areas, give them all the resources they need to be successful. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity. How would you describe your relationship with Active Yards and what it's done for your business over the years? It's, uh, it's been really unique, I think, in terms of all of our vendor relationships. And um, Active Yards is the whole package, in my opinion. So. There's, uh, there's incredible marketing, there's incredible support, but more importantly, there's a true partnership. And I think that that's been demonstrated over and over, over the years. I think you and I have personally disagreed on strategy sometimes. Less and, now. Yeah, that's At true. At the beginning, we certainly we did. We did. And, the past but I had to years. overcome kind of those, those uh, ruts that I was in, in terms of what I felt we had to do and how we sell it. And I think that we've really aligned ourselves over the last couple of years. And... Uh, it's really proven to uh, to bring down the barriers of of selling the product. And I think it's been really healthy. So, I think um, Active Yards is an incredible partner. I've uh, I've supported it. I, we've we've supported each other through this process. Yeah, you've always been a really good partner. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Yeah, we appreciate that. And and what about the the relation, the networking that you've done through Active Yards? I think you're one of the probably the most connected guys in the right. program. Um, made some great friends through the program, but more importantly, I think that we've been able to solve some real business problems through the membership of, of the Active Yards community. Yeah. And that's that's really special. I mean there's some there's some guys that I, I truly call, you know, on my, my short list of friends that yeah. that have come out of this group and I think that uh, everybody's willing to help each other and then you leveraging that network and leveraging the opportunity to be able to resolve problems creates a peer group that's unmatched in the it industry. It is, yeah. And you've been a an asset to that and, and it's interesting you know with our relationship a lot of dealers you know perspective and current kind of look at active yards and they're trying to figure out exactly where our relationship starts and stops where the line crosses you know where active yards you know on the truck goes and where your name of your company goes and all that you know an interesting aside of our relationship with adrian and and lifescaping and, and borg fencing over the years has been the fact that we sometimes we're totally like going full bore steam ahead together, 
And then there were times where you needed to retreat and concentrate on something else. And then we kind of just let you do that. That's but true. we didn't change our marketing plan. You know, we didn't set up another dealer. We didn't. And then there were day, times and then he's like, hey, wait, I'm ready to go. You know, now I want it all back and, and we still have it to grow with. So it's, I always share with this, you know, this kind of this, this concept with people that we're, we always run, we'll run as fast as you want to run. Mm -hmm. And so there are times when Adrian was outrunning me, you mm -hmm. know, and then there's times I was outrunning you. Absolutely. And, and then your sales manager, Jeff Smith, you know, same type of deal. And, uh, and we've been patient enough to get kind of through it. And what I just feel so great about today as I look around and I see all the activity and the sales meeting today, and I, I, I see so much potential now that everyone is kind of like, we've all, we've all worked out all the growing pains you know, mm -hmm. both, you know, at every, at every we're, we're in the right place now. I it's mean, I great. Think, I feel, it feels great. Right. I think yeah. mentally and, and, you know, I mean, we're, we're in the, we're in the right place mentally to be able to tackle this in the way that active yards and the way that your marketing program intended it to be. It, yeah. It's, and it's I think super that's, exciting. That's yeah. what's exciting about where we're at today. I, I, and I love, I love that. And I love watching it. Now there's another thing that's very exciting for me with you is, um, you know, you, you know, as we're doing the, this particular show, you know, and the fence show has been kind of a passion of ours and we're excited about where it's going to go, you know, to let people, you know, kind of see a bigger picture and learn from guys like you and, and all that stuff is. Uh, so I started sharing with you some of the stuff I was doing and then you you kind of said, you know what, I think I could do something with that. So just share like what your evolution has been in the past two months with g going from, you know, no, no, no knowledge base of any sort of social media to what I saw the other day, which was I thought one of the best customer testimonial interviews that uh, I'd ever seen. And we'll link this to, so people can see what he had done. Tell me about your experiences with um, right. you know, being on this side of the camera, so to speak. <laughs> well, what's cool is this, you motivated me, Pete. So yeah. I, uh, I basically took what you were doing and I said, you know, how can we do some pull through marketing in our own area so that, um, so that we can start to brand lifescaping as the go-to fence place. Just like we're branding Active Yards as the solution for vinyl and aluminum, yep. we, we wanted to also brand Lifescaping as the go-to fence company. And so, from my perspective, doing the pictures, doing the posts like you're doing and encouraging others on the dealer uh, Facebook page to do, uh, I thought was a great idea. And what it's really done for us is we have customers talking about it, friends and family are talking about yeah. it, employees are talking about it. And uh, just today, even doing this, people's curiosity is coming out and saying, hey, what's going on? It's like there's a new vibe that we're, we're really transitioning with the time. And I think that sometimes as fence guys, we kind of uh, get stuck in our own old ways of doing things. Completely, we all and, do. And it's, uh, this has been a great opportunity. So it's been a learning experience. I've done a few and my goal is to continue to do more and whether they're interviews or just uh, features of jobs that we've done, I think it's been a great help. Yeah, I, I think like one of the things that I, I would encourage people to do, and I think you know, you're learning yourself, is that our business, the fence business, is very visual. Mm -hmm. And the average consumer doesn't see behind the scenes. And so when you can bring to life in a very simple format, you know, with a, with a video, um, and show people what it, what it looks like. So as I look around here, you know, I see forklifts and I see inventory and then I see your trucks leaving in the morning. I see your trucks coming back. I see people, real people, just like everybody else, um, you know, that are supporting families. You see the sales guys, the staff, you see your crews at the job, you see a satisfied customer. And the reality is in 2018, all this stuff is so easy just to capture on a video. That's true. And then if you can then figure out a way to put it on a platform so that people can see it, what ends up happening is I think, and this is that you're proving, I think, is that now when a prospective customer wants to talk about fencing, they are, they feel like they already know you. Right. And, and it, and it's a little bit of this, you know, I joke with the people in the office about this. It's, it's a little bit of the duck dynasty strategy. Mm -hmm. Like get to know me as a person, get to know the company as real people. Now you're not inviting a stranger into your home. You're inviting someone that you know from, you know, from this intimate uh, experience from the video. And then there's this cool thing about the fence business, which is 
something's not there today and it will be there tomorrow, meaning the product installation, or it's an old thing today and it's going to be replaced for the before and after shot. And then it's all these incredible, interesting life stories and uh, customer testimonials. So, so I'd encourage you to keep that up. Um, I, I love the fact that you, you're not doing as I say, you're doing as I do. Mm -hmm. And you also, you know, I joked about this earlier. I said, because look at the fence show. I mean, you know, look where we are. This isn't the most perfect setup, but it's something. Right. And, and if I was going to worry about making the perfect setup, I would still be on fence show number one. Mm -hmm. Now, your particular thing that you did the other day, I thought was a little bit really, I mean, over, it was really good. <laughs> so it was more, more meticulous than I would have done. Mm -hmm. um, but I admire you for that. And I think that uh, you probably could put together some great stuff. So um, I think that uh, you'll find that that will become a, a big part of uh, you becoming, a, as you call it, the fence expert is at it again. I was hoping that you were going to be the, the vinyl the fence vinyl. expert, but I see you. I see just like every other <laughs> fence guy, you had to remind me, Pete, I sell other fences exactly. too. Exactly. <laughs> so so yeah. he didn't want to brand himself as just one thing, but I think it's pretty cool. And, and have fun with that. Not to mention, yes. this, even for me and you talking yeah. right now, this is, this is better than just be, mm -hmm. you and I griping at each other in the office <laughs> about you know, a typical sales call yeah. between a vendor and a customer. So this is fun. And that's the same thing you'll have when you interview customers. Right. And what's amazing is the customers are actually creating into it. A, they're they're into it, and they're they're helping us create something different out of it that we wouldn't have even expected. Oh, yeah. They're bringing in other neighbors into it. They're they're bringing their friends and family because they can share the videos. And they can put on their and, Facebook page exactly, and, and they the can share testimonials. Yeah. And it's crazy when we posted that one video. There was like 200 likes in a matter of minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's just it was wonderful. And that's 200 people that wouldn't have necessarily seen it mm -hmm. before. And so and, and I 200 think, people that. If they have any need for fencing in the next call. few months, it's what was that place that you know that Mrs. Jones was you know on that video for exactly, and so you kind of win. So I'm really excited about that for you, and I, and I, uh, I, I encourage other other dealers to do the same thing. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So, um, what do you do like to do outside of uh, the fence business besides raise your beautiful family and and, and yeah. uh, spend all the time with your your beautiful wife? Keeps me busy. So um, I um, I enjoy water sports. So I enjoy jet skiing and boating and I try to do that as often as I can uh, and in California we can do that more often than you yeah. can on yeah, the East Coast. Yeah, so. can. Look at this. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's really nice but other than that I, I work a lot and I do try to spend as much time as I can with the kids. So Yeah. Now um, I, I saw that you just, uh, you know, you, you've become a, uh, a bi, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, <laughs> a bi citizen. What's the word? Uh, dual citizen. Dual citizen. Absolutely. So why do you tell everybody the story of your dual citizenship? Right. So uh, my parents and, and uh, my parents were born in Malta, which is a small island in the Mediterranean. Yep. And so um, so as time's gone as time has gone on, I actually met my wife there and we got married. And so I have lots of friends and family there. So uh, so we decided that uh, it's a place that we'd like to to uh, have more uh, in our life of and so I became a dual citizen so I'm a European Union citizen for the country of Malta which allows me just to travel easier back and forth and uh, no fences in Malta though because it's all uh, stone so was your wife already a dual citizen uh, she's uh, she just became a dual citizen she just became a United States citizen after 26 years of marriage oh, so, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah so but she's done so uh, she was originally a multi-citizen oh, okay that's awesome yeah well, so it's great so uh, all of our kids are becoming dual citizens and just helps in life you never know what opportunities present themselves yeah yeah well maybe we can break that that stone wall I hear a lot of people like to build fences on top of stone walls yeah <laughs> it's a California it's a California that's a, that's a Southern thing. California thing yeah uh, well I don't know we saw yeah. it today too yeah so um, as far as uh, your plans for the future you know what what what, what do you want to accomplish and what's your what's your driving goal uh, you know to try to build this because let's face it you know you've done it you've got it but what do you want to do next like how do you want this to end you know what it's um it's kind of funny because I don't think of the end I'm just thinking of the next steps mm -hmm. uh, and I, I love it so much I wake up every morning I love what I'm doing so for me it's about making it more efficient it's about um, employing quality people and creating a great quality of life because Contrary to what some people believe out there, you can do really, really well in fencing. And, <laughs> That's uh, for sure. And I think that uh, for me, it's just about um, trying to remove as many barriers as possible for as many people as possible and helping other people grow their business within our business, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and while doing that, everybody makes a profit. Yeah. So 
I haven't thought of the end game yet. Well, it seems like you know in your your situation with your employees, and and I know your you I know your heart as well, mm-hmm. is that you absolutely are committed to your your people that have helped you get here, and that you want to build a, 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 a strong future for them as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the things I, I heard today in the conversation with some of the salespeople, as there was a mix of new guys and and, and a more veteran mm-hmm. type crew, that you definitely we both feel this way. It's kind of funny. We both like. We want to share our experience so people don't have to follow and make the same mistakes right. that we made or mm-hmm. to have to go through all the different learning curves. And if we can help people with that, then that's obviously a really a great value that we can bring to Absolutely. people. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time today to, um, to introduce uh, uh, Lifescaping to the Active Yards Dealer Network and for being on the Fence Show. I look forward to uh, uh, having you again uh, down the road. and. Uh, Thank Thanks you. For having me. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. I appreciate it. You've been a great Active Absolutely. Yards dealer, a great friend. Um, also, uh, out there, thank you for watching or listening to the uh, the Fence Show. Uh, this particular episode is an Active Yards edition. Uh, you can follow us in the future on thefenceshow.com. Uh, we'll be storing all the episodes. So we look forward to uh, our next interview. Have a great day from Sacramento, California. <laughs> <laughs> Take care.